This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends Collection. There is no original date given for this interview. The interview was conducted by Mr. Guy Ross. The interviewee is Mrs. John E. Kirkpatrick of Oklahoma City. This interview is being re-recorded on March the 15th, 1985 for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. Is he ready? Yeah. I'm talking today with Mrs. John Kirkpatrick. John E., if you want to. <laughs> okay, Mrs. John E. Kirkpatrick. And uh, Mrs. Kirkpatrick, why don't you uh, go ahead and, and start, and we'll start back with uh, your family history, wherever you choose to begin. All right. Um, I think I'll tell you that I just finished reading uh, an autobiography called Speak Memory by Russian Nabokov, and he spoke uh, of the fact that Perry reached the North Pole in April of 1909. In May, Charlie Appen had sung in Paris. In June, the U.S. War Department had told reporters of plans for an aerial navy. In July, Blario had flown from Calais to Dover. And it was in 1909 that I was born, in, 19, uh, in Mar March the 10th, 1909. Uh, <clears throat> my uh, mother and father were, um, lived, had come to uh, Mangum, Oklahoma, from Texas, from Quanah, Texas, and my father was a uh, merchant. And uh, as I understand it, in uh, Mangum, he had uh, the only dry goods, they call them dry goods stores <clears throat> then, and uh, I think there were five saloons on that street. But um, uh, I, naturally, I don't remember much of that first year, and then we moved to Oklahoma City in uh, 1910, when I was a year old. And my father uh, was... Um, he was with the Baker, Hannah, and Blake Company uh, Wholesale Dry Goods. <clears throat> they were first um, located across the street from where the Skirvin Hotel is now. And then uh, later on, they were on, uh, I believe it's um, First Street where the uh, wholesale, uh, Brown's Wholesale, no, Brown, uh, John A. Brown's wholesale department. Uh, not their wholesale department, but their warehouse. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, um, so he was um, in uh, dry goods for a number of years and uh, until, I guess, he went into the oil business and about, um, oh dear, I hate to make a guess, but probably it was... Um, in um, oh, probably after the First World War, and also into uh, he was in banking <coughs> then, and he was one of the uh, founders of the uh, Liberty National Bank and uh, director. Well, you really uh, almost were just lacking a year. Were born in Oklahoma City and have been here ever since, except for your well, education, I suppose. Well, I have been here ever since, except that for my education, and also <coughs> when uh, my husband and I were married, he was an ensign on the, in the Navy, and uh, so we were, I was away uh, for about uh, five years in the Navy with him. Maybe more, maybe more than that, I, I, um, we were, I guess we were about five years, and then we were away. Um, then we came back, I came back here at the beginning of World War II, and he, of course he was uh, in the South Pacific most of that time. I wish that you would uh, reflect a little bit on the things that uh, you remember from your childhood about uh, Oklahoma City or other things? All right. I uh, I did um, 
in these last couple of weeks when I knew I was going to uh, talk with you. I wrote a few things down, uh, if they would come to mind, and I'll just sort of glance through this and, and tell you about them. Um, I, I started school at Eugene Field. No, no, at McKinley, McKinley School. And then I went to Eugene Field. McKinley is now torn down. It's no longer standing. And Eugene Field, I think, is still standing, but I haven't, uh, I don't know if it's still a school. I suppose it is, though. Do you know? No, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I don't either. <coughs> I wasn't but, in Oklahoma mm, City in 19. Uh, uh, you, <laughs> no, you weren't, but I thought you'd know whether Eugene Field was no, still standing. I sorry. But, uh, well, one of the um, early books that I, w I was thinking about, books and things like that, was uh, Stevenson's Child's Garden of Verse. Did you read that when you were, uh, when you were young? If I did, I don't re remember it. And also... Um, uh, one of the um, things that I feel have, have have had a great influence was the uh, Book of Knowledge. Do you do you recall the Book of Knowledge? I don't know if um, the Book of Knowledge is still being read as as much as it was when I was a child or not. But we would um, go through, look up all the strange things and. And uh, consequently, remember very little of any of it. Yeah. <laughs> but that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was one of the first drivers in Oklahoma City, first women drivers. And we had a car when we were first here, I guess, in 1910. Had a car in 1910? I think that so. Must, she must have been one of the first women drivers in the... United States, probably that was. Yes, uh huh. She, yeah. well, she was one of the first women drivers, and and uh, um, I think was uh, in those days. You know, you you were always getting stuck in the mud, and they had a um, very uh, let's see, had a popular song which was called "Get Out and Get Under." Do you remember that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> get out and get under your little red automobile. <laughs> And that's, I think, the way most of the people spent their time in an automobile was getting out and, and under <laughs> to can, see what was wrong. Can you remember riding in the car in those Yes, I times? remember. And um, we, have some, we <clears throat> have some pictures. And I know I fell out several times from the back seat, playing on the, sitting on the floor probably, and fell out, rolled out. But uh, I don't think I broke any bones, so I suppose automobile wasn't going too fast in yeah. those days and then one of the things we uh, my family used to do in Oklahoma City in those days when I was a little girl was to uh, take a ride after dinner I mean that was just something people did they'd go out for a ride and uh, drive all around and I would usually uh, be in the back seat and fall asleep and have to be carried in I remember that hate to know when we get back i'd hate to feel that i'd have to be awakened to walk in so i'd usually feign being asleep so <laughs> i'd get carried in <laughs> and uh also my mother was a uh, very good golfer oh really and uh, she was an early um played belonged to the oklahoma city golf and country club my mother and father did and they um uh, played golf and she used to um, quite often win the games from him <laughs> but well what was the country this brings up another area of interest to me and that is what was the country club like the Oklahoma then? City Golf and Country Club well it was uh, in where Crown Heights is now uh, in that area where Crown Heights are and they and um, I don't remember it too much. I, I remember mostly there was a little uh, uh, sort of summer house out on the uh, course someplace. And I used to sit there and play and around climbing on over that and in and out waiting, you know, for the golf game to be over. I don't remember too much about it. And I don't, and however, it was, uh, well, they had dances there and it was, uh, a, quite a gathering place. No. 
the place that was a lot of fun. And in those days, um, people used to walk, of course, a lot more than they did now. And um, I used to always walk to school, you know, when during uh, grade school, it was always within walking distance. And um, we lived on uh, 16th or in the vicinity of 16th and 17th Street. Growing up, I lived um, first, I think it was in the 500 block and then the 1000 block on 16th and then on 17th Street. We left for a short while when my <clears throat> father um, went to Lawton to take over a um, bank that had failed down there. And uh, we were there oh, for a few years. I was away and then I went away to school when I was uh, 14. What kind of place was uh, Oklahoma City to live in for a girl growing up? In those well, days? it was it was very nice because uh, it was, uh, <clears throat> well, I don't know, just for a girl, but for almost uh, anyone, it was fun. You, you didn't have the, uh, oh, I suppose the hectic times so many youngsters have now with all the things that they have to do. We did, we had uh, dancing lessons and and different uh, extracurricular activities such as tennis and and uh, horseback riding and things like that. We um, had the movies and in my day when I was a girl, the silent movies. And um, we were, had uh, bicycles and. We weren't afraid, you know, we could ride them on the street because traffic wasn't what it is now, and um, it wasn't dangerous to ride your bicycle. All the little red cars were stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let's see, the um, one of the principal evening entertainment was called Watching the Crowd. My mother and father and, and I and I suppose a lot of other people who lived here in Oklahoma City would all go downtown and park and watch other people walk up and down the street. And that's <laughs> called watching the crowd. And whenever you couldn't find anything else to do, you go watch the crowd. So that was, I guess, the television of those days. <laughs> yeah, or the, drag, or the dragging main. Yes. Mm -hmm. main. You remember that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's my Jerry. So um, that was quite a bit of fun. And I don't remember, I'm sure we had some, um, well, uh, art, um, probably there were some art museums. I really don't, uh, I don't remember them if there were though. And But we did have concerts and we had opera that came to Oklahoma City, had an opera house. And, um, did Oklahoma City have a symp? It, it did not have a symphony then, did it? No, not not in the early days. But um, you see, that also was before um, air conditioning, <coughs> and that made a, a great o Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I guess every place in Oklahoma was really hot in those days, and keeping cool, well, most people would leave here in the. Well, not most people, but a lot of people would leave here and go away in the summertime, go to Colorado, which was close by, or Michigan, or someplace like that. And we quite often did, but then sometimes we'd be here during the hot weather, and oh, it really got hot, and really pretty bad. But, um, and to, to cool off, we'd sometimes, um, get under a shower and get in our, with our nightgowns on, you know, before going to bed to try and get a cool breeze. Or and quite, quite often, too, people would sleep out in their yards, in their backyards, to cool off. So it would, I think, somehow or other, I feel it was hotter then than it is now, but uh, maybe not. We took another thing that people used to do a lot when I was young, and they don't do it so much anymore. I think they just have a, 
oh, they have cookouts and things like that. But when I was young, we used to go on picnics and we'd drive out to the country someplace and our Wheeler Park or someplace like that have uh, picnics. Seems to me like as I listen to you talk that uh, it kind of makes me feel a nostalgia for something I really never experienced, but it looks like it would have been so much better for families to be together then, maybe easier than it is now. Yes, mm-hmm. It, um, I, th I think there was probably more rapport in the family, the children and, and the parents together, because uh, they, they didn't have this, um, all these other things that take them apart now, I believe. And um, one, one thing, too, I remember was um, the early uh, fairgrounds, going to the fair. And uh, I, I remember this one time, my mother was having luncheon, and I went to the fair with my father, and I was holding on to his hand, you know, and walking along. And first thing you know, I had uh, lost his hand, and he, or he had lost my, me, and um, oh, I had a desperate feeling, you know. I couldn't find him any place, and so a policeman who, you know, worked out fairgrounds took me to the... Um, station there on the fairgrounds, the police station there that they had on the fairgrounds, and he had called my mother, and m the whole luncheon party came out to look for me. <laughs> How old were you? Oh, I don't know. I must have been awfully little to have only been able to see the hand. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But we think where, about that. Where thing. was the fairgrounds? Do you remember? Well, that was on. Uh, yes, that that was over on. Um, um, the um, east east side east side of town over um, about um, tenth and eastern or what oh goodness I, I don't know I'm not I don't I know where it was but I'm not sure what that street is now but way over there on about tenth and the east part of the town. Eastern, I guess. And, um, let's see. Oh, the movies in those days, too, were silent movies, but they'd usually have a person playing the, um, piano. And, during the movie? Yes, during the movie to, you know, add a little were they, were they pathos and whatnot. Were they player pianists, or did they really No, play they, really, they played the piano themselves. And, um, then also the the um, war years i don't remember too well but i remember having to clean up my plate because of the hoover regime not wanting to waste anything that the belgian children would like to be eating and um also i remember knitting washcloths for the soldiers which i dare say they <laughs> shattered at the mm. side of and um, well I started studying French then before I was uh, in the first grade my mother had a friend who taught French Mrs. Uh, or she was Miss Janelle Hale at that time and she had a class for youngsters and Before you started in the first grade, you studied, yes. you studied mm -hmm. French all your life then. Yes. Well, then for, there was quite a while that I didn't study. I didn't study it any t We didn't have French in the grade school then, so I didn't study uh, from before school until after I was in um, high school. And I didn't, really, I didn't go to high school because I went away to a prep school in um, Washington, D.C., to Miss Madeira's in Washington, D.C. It was at 1330 DuPont, I mean 1330 19th Street, which was below DuPont Circle. DuPont Circle has changed since then, too. What was it like for a teenage girl to go away from Oklahoma to Washington to school? Was it a traumatic situation? Well, um, I was 14 at the time, and um, uh, we'd go up on the train, and it was quite a long train trip, as I remember. And uh, 
it was always a lot of fun going on the train because there'd be a lot of other girls and boys going east on the train, and we'd uh, I'd always come back at Christmas time, as I remember, and we'd get caught in snowstorms. The train would get slowed down, and and maybe we'd be a day late or something, but. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. The uh, you experienced just by riding on the train experienced uh, uh, something of historical significance because that's almost a bygone era now. People going very far on a train. It certainly is. And you know, I got a letter from my father when I was away at school uh, from the first uh, airmail out of Oklahoma City. I got one of the first airmail letters from uh, Oklahoma City. It was on the plane that uh, <coughs> had the first airmail letter, letters. Uh, well, I think it would be uh, interesting for us to have on this tape uh, how you uh, grew up, went away to college, when you uh, met uh, your uh, husband. Mm -hmm. When you married? Well, um, how long how long are we going to talk? By the way. Well, uh, how uh, we can just gauge it to however much longer you want to spend. Well, maybe, I don't want to take all the time another, in the world. Uh, another ten minutes. Or so. All right. Um, I um, I went to uh, France for what would have been my last year of uh, prep school. I went to Madeira three years, then I went to France my last year. And uh, then I came back and went to Oklahoma University for uh, two years. Then I transferred and went to Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. And um, I believe that I met, uh, well, I, I probably had known John uh, all the time because he went to McKinley too, you know, that first mm -hmm. time, but I wasn't uh, cognizant of him. And... Uh, I guess he he dawned early in my life um, when I was um, home from um, school, from college at Smith, my, probably my junior year at school, and um, he was home from the Naval Academy, and we had a mutual friend who was also at the Naval Academy, and I met him uh, through him. and. Um, so um, we um, we married the year next year after we gra he grad we both graduated in 1931. He graduated from the Naval Academy and I graduated from Smith in 1931. Were you uh, were you uh, was was he on sea duty or something or were you together doing his military career? Uh, well, when John uh, graduated. Um, he he proposed to me uh, out in California, and he had just, you know, been at sea after graduation. And uh, then we married, I guess, the next year, and uh, he was um, at sea. Um, oh, usually the he was on the uh, USS Arizona at that time when we were married, and then he was on the... Uh, Cincinnati, I think it was. But anyway, and also he was on staff duty on the USS California. But um, uh, in those days, which was, the f this was in 19, uh, around 1932, we were married in 1932, the ships would go out for practice uh, during the week and usually come back in on the weekend. And then sometimes, of course, they'd go for longer periods, be gone for longer times. But as a rule, they'd just go out and have their maneuvers and whatnot and then come back so, but for you, the week. So you did spend the first few years of your married life as a yes. wife of a Navy officer? Yes, for uh, three, three years. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you uh, a couple questions about your role in the community. You uh, uh, 
grew up in Oklahoma City and were part of the part of the uh, main stream of uh, the heart of the city, and uh, and now have uh, now part of the very heart of Oklahoma City, I'd say. And it, it, you must have a feeling uh, for Oklahoma City from this. You must have. You must. It seems to me you must have always had some sort of feeling for Oklahoma City, having been here since you were one year old. Yes. But anyway, I. I look here and see all the things you've been involved in, which I guess expresses that. Um, but uh, I want to ask you about, since you've been involved in so many cultural things, uh, about what you think the uh, the significant developments in Oklahoma City have been culturally. Well, um, it, it's rather hard to... Uh to answer this, but I think, of course, having our uh, symphony, our symphony orchestra, has uh, been a, a great uh, inspiration, and uh, then having uh, the uh, our Oklahoma Art Center was uh, started during the WPA period, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Nan Sheets was the director, and was the director for many, many years until um, just recently when, when she retired. But um, there, um, I, I think she has, has certainly been the outstanding um, art leader in Oklahoma, and um, Aside from being a fine painter herself, uh, she didn't paint very much during the time. All this time, she didn't have time, except you know, in the summer times when she'd go out to uh, um, New Mexico and paint. But all the rest of the time, she was there pitching for the <laughs> Oklahoma Art Center, and uh, it was um, through the, her inspiration and the fact that. That we thought it would, that we'd like to see the uh, uh, art center reality while she was still living to enjoy it too. That uh, my husband and I donated the uh, money for the building of the Oklahoma Art Center, the uh, building itself, and and um, <clears throat> then uh, the, um, the science and arts building that uh, started with the planetarium in the uh, part of the art center and then when the Garrer collection was loaned to us we felt that it needed um, a, a spot of its own and the planetarium uh, needed to be larger so then we built the uh, building there and and um, moved they moved uh, over there but the um, and I think that um, I, I've been connected with the Oklahoma City uh, the Junior League of Oklahoma City and I think that uh, that has been a great uh, cultural influence because uh, they have started so many things that I couldn't even begin to um, you know list now mm -hmm. that the um, city has then taken over and and uh, fulfilled. I was interviewed uh, Dr. Edward Everett Dale about a couple months ago, I guess, who is, as you know, the, I guess the most eminent historian of Oklahoma. And he, uh, his observation was that Oklahoma had made great economic strides and great industrial strides, but that the as he put it, the spiritual and cultural life of Oklahoma had lagged behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you agree with that? That it's uh, lagged behind the economic growth? Well, it probably has to a certain extent. You and your husband have certainly been in the forefront of being the benefactors of some things that uh, help remedy that situation, I'd say, with the planetarium. And uh, I guess... Uh, 
most of them, most of us think of the planetarium first when we think about, mm -hmm. think about these things. Uh, well, we might close this interview by by my asking you what you think the future of Oklahoma City is culturally or in any other ways that you, what do you think the future holds? Well, I, I don't know. I think that uh, Christian College and looking out here at all these, uh, uh, all of this um, electronic system that you have, and uh, I, I see a, a great uh, future, and I, and I think that uh, Due to the to the college and the uh, um, broad aspect that you have of uh, electronics and and the influence of electronics, that um, it, it's just too exciting to even begin to think what the future culturally and spiritually can be, because <clears throat> I think the two go together as um, well as economically too because he had to have some money to enjoy the uh, these other these other things well this has been a uh, good interview very I appreciate the things you